um, for the board and for all of those in the department that work so hard. I have to make a personal note here. When I first moved to Southfield, I was so excited to discover that we had an ice skating rink. Uh, it was just, it was stunning to me that we actually could actually go skating in the rink in our own community. And I think a lot of people feel that way. I have so many people come to me uh, and just tell me how much they really appreciate our parks and recreation department and the activities that we have. And this summer, when you go outside and you walk across the project, you see people in the volleyball courts, you see them in the tennis courts, you see them at the pool, you see them everywhere. And it's just, it is so exciting to see people out there recreating and doing exactly what we've designed all this for. So I'm, I'm really thrilled to have a city that has this kind of a wonderful parks and recreation department and all the activities that we provide for our residents. So on behalf of the mayor and the council, again, we're delighted to be able to present this to you, Mr. Block, on behalf of the mayor and council. If you'd like to say a few words, please do. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council President Steve Morris, as well as the rest of the council. Um, on behalf of the Parks and Rec Board, as well as the entire city, uh, Parks and Recreation Department, I want to thank you for this proclamation. I'd also like to invite all the residents to, uh, to the Civic Center Pool. Uh, you won't recognize the outside or the inside. It's been a remarkable trans uh, transformation, truly a team effort that uh, transcended several different departments. And with that, I just want to wish everybody a healthy, happy, and safe summer. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Joplin City Charter and the same police perform the duty to the office of the commission to which we were appointed or reappointed in front of the city of Southfield County of Oakland, State of Michigan, according to the Rep. Chair Bill. And while there, we had just for the council's update, we had a great meeting at the board and commission committee and we're going to look at each of the committees to make sure that they're in line with the goals of the city and that everybody is on the same page as we really need the volunteers of the city committed to the commission and the boards that they serve in. So we had a great meeting and it's good to see these individuals on board. Thank you. And after, if you would all, if you would ask me to sign your name and come up to answer the question.
Item B is approval of an award to Barrett Paving Materials, Inc. of Ypsilanti, Michigan for the 2012 Bituminous Resurfacing Program based on Barrett's low bid of $265,496. Total not to exceed project cost, including engineering, inspection, and contingency is $292,050. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2011-2012 budget and requested in the 2012-2013 budget. Item C is authorization for the mayor and city clerk to sign a contract with the Michigan Department of Transportation for the construction of the Beach Road Bridge. 70% of the funding will be provided by the city in the amount of $117,400 and 93% or $1,668,900 will be provided by Michigan Department of Transportation. This project was previously discussed with council at the December 12, 2011 meeting in conjunction with the Stream Gauge Station, which is a necessary prelude to this reconstruction. Funds are provided in the 2011-2012 Major Street Budget for the city's portion. Item B is authorization for the Southwood Career Center to apply for renewal of the existing four major grants that fund their operation. The Career Center provides com comprehensive job training and placement services for Southfield residents and businesses and is a top performing agency. Item E is approval of award to Superior Excavating Inc. of Auburn Hills, Michigan for water main replacement projects in sections 12 and 13 of the city based on Superior's low bid of $2,663,042. The total not to exceed project cost, including engineering, inspection, testing, and contingency is $2,929,346. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2011-2012 budget and included in the budget request for the 2012-2013. Item F is approval of an award to Gutterman, Inc. of East Grand Rapids. I hope I said it right. Gutterman and Gutterman, Inc. of East Grand Rapids, Michigan for the lowest acceptable bid of $17,950 to acquire a leak detection system for all types of water pipes within the city. This equipment determines the site's repair locations, thereby saving time and labor costs. Funds are provided for this purpose in the 2011-2012 water and sewer budget. Madam Chair? Mr. Frazier. I move that we approve consent agenda items CAA, B, C, D, E, and F. Support. Motion by Mr. Frazier, supported by Mr. Steiner. Ms. Jordan? I have one question on consent agenda item A, and that is in the first paragraph through the chair of Mr. Charette. I'd like to make sure that the engineering services in December when these contracts end, that we go out and solicit bids. So I'm wondering if we could include in the middle of the very first paragraph that when we say December 31st, 2012, at the appropriate time in which we're going to use the contract, if we can add at which the state will solicit bids for its engineering services, which means at the end of December of this year, we put it in writing that we're going to solicit bids for engineering services. I don't want to have another extension granted. I just firmly believe we need to go out and solicit bids for engineering services. Through the chair, there's no problem at all with that. That's the intent. Okay. So as we indicated in the chair's comments, that is the intent. We won't be glad to put the word in there. I was looking for it, and I believe you're correct. I don't see it in here, but it should be here. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. Next is coming to public hearing. Through the chair, the first public hearing was originally postponed in April meeting due to foundation and structural review by the building department. Those items have been reviewed and satisfied to the satisfaction of the building department to issue the permit. First public hearing is GP 1236, SP 1285, special use and site plan approval review request. A new vision technology on behalf of the owner of Phoenix Group Holdings for the construction of a freestanding 99-foot high communications tower. The property is located at 21472 Bridge Street on the east side of Bridge Street in the Bridge Industrial Park. I have a small video presentation after which the petitioner is here to answer any questions. Can I have a presentation first? Yes. 
1236 SP 1285 is a special use and site plan review request of New Vision Technologies on behalf of the owner, Phoenix Group Holdings, LLC, <coughs> for the construction of a freestanding communications tower on property located at 21472 Bridge Street on the east side of Bridge Street, north of 8 Mile Road in Section 32 of the city. The subject property, as well as the properties to the north, south, and west across Bridge Street are zoned IL Light Industrial. The property to the east is zoned I-1 Industrial. With regard to the existing land uses, the subject property, as well as the property to the north, south, and west across Bridge Street, are developed with light industrial office uses. The property to the east is vacant. The site contains 0.68 acres of land with 100.05 feet of frontage on Bridge Street and a depth of 295 feet. The special use request is to allow the construction of a freestanding communications tower within the city. The submitted site plan reflects the construction of a freestanding 99 foot high communications tower. There are no parking requirements for the tower. Landscape buffering of the tower is required. Issues considered by the planning department during the review of the special use and site plan were 69 foot waiver of building height, 30 feet required, 99 feet proposed. 16 foot waiver of building side yard setback from the north property line. 99 feet required, 83 feet proposed. 84.5 feet waiver of building side yard setback from the south property line. 99 feet required, 14.5 feet proposed. The standards and conditions of the wireless communications facilities ordinance. This proposal is in accordance with the Southfield Comprehensive Master Plan, noting technology corridor subarea.
regards to their, the structural integrity. They have a 110 mile per hour wind load on the property. But things happen. I, I know. And I think
I'm sorry. I, we need to name an address for the record. I, I didn't. Uh, uh, my name is Tom Walsh. The address is uh, 1191 West Square Lake Road, Bloomfield Mills. Thank you. This is a public hearing. I declare the public hearing open. If anyone wishes to please step forward, give the name and address for the record. Again, Pamela Gerald, P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155. My telephone number is 248-352-9188. Again, I'm in support of this project. This is an example of things that the City of Southfield are doing right in conjunction with the Planning Department. I think using a wind turbine for light energy use as well as educational purposes is going to be an awesome thing for the students there. I went to Oakland Community College in the early 90s, Royal Oak and Southfield before I moved on to the University of Michigan, so I think this is a great educational opportunity. Thank you.
tonight, what we're proposing, we're asking council to conduct a public hearing upon the conclusion of the public hearing. I'm hopeful that city council will adopt a resolution allowing the city of Southfield to establish a PACE district, a uh, property assessed clean energy district. The district proposed is citywide. This is, in my opinion, probably one of the best new economic development tools we have. How can we foster new investment in buildings that are 20, 30, 40, 50 years old? How can we make sure that these buildings compete with new buildings being built in, new, in, 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 uh, in further west or in other communities? This is an economic development tool that will foster new investment, create new jobs, protect the city's tax base. Many businesses today, when they're looking, they want buildings that are LEED certified. They want buildings that meet these energy standards. So this is part of ensuring Southfield's long-term competitiveness in the economic development. Tonight, we're proposing a venture with Lean and Green Michigan. will be one of the first communities uh, in the state of Michigan to adopt a PACE district for the city. At this time, I'd like to turn this presentation over to Andy Levin with Levin uh, Energy Partners. Um, before I turn the presentation, I want to communicate to council that we've had extensive meetings with uh, Miller Canfield, Miller Canfield, Mark Bennett, Mike McGee are part of the team and the presentation you're seeing tonight. Also, AKT Peerless Energy. Uh, AKT Peerless Energy is an energy consultant that we've been using as part of our energy block grant. They're currently doing uh, some, like, I think we've done six energy audits in the last six months for Southfield businesses. Um, we've been working with them now for the better part of uh, the last two, year, uh, two years. Um, I think this is an exciting opportunity for Southfield to be, become a leader with our 27 million square feet of office space fostering this type of investment. This is probably what the next 50 years in southeastern Michigan will be, will become more of a restoration economy, and how do we ensure that these buildings will have another 50 to 100 years worth of life. I'm going to turn the presentation over to Andy Levin then. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. Good evening, city council members. Good evening, Mayor. It's great to see everybody. Uh, we are indeed talking about uh, creating a... Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. May I do need your name and address? Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Business address, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, Andy Levin, uh, Levin Energy Partner, 6895 Telegraph Road, Michigan. Mm -hmm. 4831. So, uh, we are talking here about Southfield uh, joining a public-private partnership to help Southfield businesses save money to create jobs, grow the tax base in Southfield, and green the community by cutting energy use out of your buildings here. So we PACE can really be a major economic development driver for Southfield. All the money from it comes from private from private sources. Basically, the people who use this new uh, uh, finance market for energy efficiency energy pay for it. Uh, there's no city money involved uh, whatsoever. It helps property owners, commercial industrial property owners, multifamily building property owners, make their buildings more energy efficient and save money doing so. It is great for the property owners, not just because they save money, because, but because they can fill their buildings. It attracts tenants, they're more, buildings are more comfortable, if they're modernized with better energy systems, and they can be less expensive as well. And as Fred said, people want to be in a green building these days. It'll raise the tax base steadily over time by improving the value of your buildings and keeping them full, and there's no risk to the city. Um, the city doesn't take on any risk in the project. Michigan's PACE statute is the reason we can do this. Uh, 27 states have, have passed PACE statutes plus the District of Columbia. We passed ours in December of 2010 when I was running the Department of Energy, Labor, and Economic Growth uh, for the state of Michigan. Um, ours covers commercial, industrial, and multifamily property. It will cover it throughout the city. Um, it does not cover single-family homes. That's something maybe we can add on at a later time if the state legislature wants to. It basically uh, gives a lot of flexibility on financing arrangements for participating municipalities. It, 
it allows municipalities to work together. So here's what can be financed in a PACE district under our statute. All the energy efficiency improvements you can think of. Windows, insulation, caulking, leather stripping, roofs, HVAC systems, etc. Um, also, any renewable energy improvement. Solar, wind, geothermal, and so forth. Anything that reduces water use or saves water in the building. Plus, new manufacturing equipment that saves energy or water. So, it, with your, your manufacturing businesses here, if they swap out an older manufacturing uh, process equipment for newer that saves energy, they can finance it that way. Um, as I mentioned, 100% of the project can be financed, and, and people can also refinance uh, a project. So that's, um, you know, it's helpful for people who've just done something recently but they didn't get a good rate on it. So here's why this property assessed clean energy is uh, so important. It gives the property owner uh, access to longer term money uh, that is, they can get at a better rate because you're doing this through, a, basically what Southfield is doing is allowing property owners to voluntarily take on a special assessment. <coughs> so that special assessment is senior to any mortgage, it's very secure, and plus it runs with the land so that the new, so that the energy savings and the obligation to pay it uh, goes to the new owner of the property. It's basically tied to the property, not to the owner. So here's what you get out of it. Instead of a typical bank loan of three to five years, you can finance up to the useful life of the equipment, of the improvements made, up to typically up to 20 years. And you're going to get a little bit better in interest rate due to the stronger lien position of being a special assessment instead of a bank loan. Plus, the building owner and the bank financing it get a guarantee from the contractor of the energy savings. By state law, the contractor has to guarantee the energy savings in projects over $250,000, which in a city like this with a lot of big commercial properties, most of them would be. Here's, here's, what, it, here's what the di a difference it makes in a typical project. Take a project, $550,000 project, and if you look uh, down, scoop down to the annual energy saving, it's going to save $100,000 a year. Okay? So that means that it's going to take a little over five years to pay off. So here's the problem with a, a traditional bank loan. They're not going to start saving money until after they borrowed the money and paid it all back. The whole time they borrow money, they're in negative cash flow. So if you look at this, the traditional loan of five years, that's generous versus the pace lien, 15 years. Not even the maximum, but we're trying to give you like a conservative estimate. So first of all, in a bank loan, you're only going to be able to finance 85%, right? The bank wants something down, typically here, 15% uh, of the project, $82,500. With the pace project, the property owner doesn't have to pay anything down. The interest rate, 7.5% versus 8.5%, because of a little bit better rate, because of the uh, superior lien position, and so here's what it comes down to. You're saving $100,000 a year in energy costs, but if you do a traditional bank loan, you're going to pay $113,000, $714,000 a year for that five years. So you're, you're negative $14,000 a year the whole time you have a loan. And basically people just don't do it because they don't have $82,000 to put down and they don't want to go five years of losing money in the hopes that, you know, five, six years down the road, they'll start, they'll start realizing savings. Whereas just by Southfield not investing any city money but allowing the, the property owner to use the lien position, now you've got the pace situation there. They borrowed over 15 years. They're paying 63000 a year to, to pay off the loan, so they've got $36,000 positive cash flow throughout the 15 years. And this, so it's a risky, really powerful thing that's going to free up your building owners to do a lot of projects, put people to work in Southfield, and make your buildings more attractive. Now, the important thing is, this is completely voluntary. So if you look at this picture of a city with five, six buildings here, right? This building in the middle, the old building in the middle says, we 
a traditional model of doing something for a city is you go pay for something. You go get a vendor, and if cities have paid, I don't know any really that paid only 100000 but they pay up to 750000 that we know of to create a base district. They give city tax money, taxpayers money over to some nonprofit or for profit to create a base district, whether anything even ever happens or not. So this way we think is much better. It's Lean Green Michigan is a public private partnership that Southfield, as leading the way truly among cities in Michigan, uh, can join at no charge. Levin Energy Partners administers the district. Miller Canfield and, and, and both uh, Mike and Mark are here, um, does the legal work for the city. And we are only we only recoup costs through the property owners paying points at closing or whatever, you know, paying the, the traditional deal where you pay the, the property owners pay to be able to use the market. And because it's advantageous to them, it's just a it, you know, it's a, a part of the transaction cost. Um, so this is a faster process. There's no RFP, you're not saying a contract with us, you don't have to you know, you meet next month and change your mind and say, but now we don't want to do this. But you really could. You're not signing a contract with us. And you don't take any risk. You're just doing what Fred said. You're opening up a really powerful tool for your property owners to use to re to finance or refinance energy improvements to their buildings so they can save money for themselves and improve the quality of their buildings for their tenants. And now if you look at the broader picture, um, this is really you're really uh, having a statewide impact here because you are starting this public private partnership that other jurisdictions can join. Uh, cities and counties aren't duplicating what each other are doing, they're not wasting taxpayer money to create recreate something that somebody else already did. They're not creating a lot of different rules in each jurisdiction that a big property owner says, Well, I'm not this doesn't help me because I got a one set of rules in Southfield, one set of rules in Lansing, and one set of rules in Flint. Everybody who joins Green Green Michigan is going to be one efficient management of it. going to be one set of rules. Banks are going to want to invest because it's a big pool of companies uh, that they can invest in. And municipalities save uh, money by not duplicating what each other is doing and they take this shared services approach. And, you know, we're even pressing the uh, administration in Lansing that they should give cities credit for this, for their, you know, uh, cooperation with each other. And by the way, the Michigan Economic Development Corporation is in the Green Michigan as a partner, and they're going to provide gap financing for companies, property owners that need a little help, or the bank, and the, you know, the bank wants to do it, the property owner wants to do it, but the collateral, you know, the company, the, the property owner might need a little help, and the MEC puts, puts some money into that bank uh, in order to help get the project over the line. So it's, you know, I just have to say, you know, I'm not, I'm from Berkeley, I'm not from Southfield, but you know, around here, Southfield.
for such a program like this from the state, that would be fantastic. Um, we do have our first totally green business here in the city of Southfield at Sarah Chevrolet. And this will be a model for other businesses and commercial uh, property owners to participate in. And I remember a great presentation that the city planner set up uh, once and Mr. Robert Gibbs spoke. And Robert Gibbs said that a city should make businesses come in and conform to your standards. This would be a standard. This would be something great for businesses to conform to. I, again, am in total support of this project. Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I declare a public hearing closed. Thank you. Mr. Patrick? I'd just like to mention that uh, and Mr. Levin and his uh, uh, company and uh, Professionals have given us an uh, idea of what this is about in the community hall. Uh, it's a very attractive thing, I believe, for the city of Southfield. And uh, when the discussion uh, finishes, I'd like to make a motion. President Obama? Yes. yes. Uh, President, well, President Obama. 
just be approved, Mr. Johnson, to send a goal on our website as well in terms of exposure? Absolutely. One of the first ones in there is going to be our own staff, planning department, all of the personnel, building department, code officers. All of us are ambassadors to selling this concept and letting our business community know that this type of economic development tool is available if they want to re-energize or weatherize or make their buildings more energy efficient. So that will be our first. And then we'll also be working a circuit, the bank, finance community, property owners, property managers. So I'm hopeful that some of the first matrix groups like Society of Engineering will probably do some dog and pony shows where they're showing some savings. I personally attended one about six weeks ago on a morning breakfast where they were showing some savings and some multifamily property groups have had. And the number is $600,000, $700,000 a year are how the apartment, one particular apartment property approved their financial performance. And that was presented to a group of about 120 folks. So it's a constant education process. That's good. And I think the lunch and learn is a great way to introduce this to the community. But I'd like to make sure we do it maybe even on a semi-annual basis and not just for the next year so that we can keep the exposure to the community. Now the other question I had, when you say we're going to have a Southfield Pace Building, that's going to blanket the entire city, is that correct? Yes, the district will be the entire city. Okay. And then lastly, will the city, and I guess this can go to you Mr. Levin, will the city be notified of the property that has opted in? How will we be kept abreast on what happens? Yes, absolutely. The city will be notified of every single project. And the resolution includes the naming of an authorized official who will talk to your staff who will be involved with every single project. So you will be notified. Okay. I think this is great. I think we have to look at the redevelopment of our community and making our buildings more energy efficient. It's just a win-win for the city. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just have a few questions as a follow-up to the May 7th meeting when you first presented it. Are we going to be one of the first, if not the first, community in Michigan to participate in this? You will be the first. I think that's a good idea. It's exciting that we are a city worth looking at in terms of trying this out. The city of Ann Arbor created a PACE district quite a few months ago. But they're not taking this approach. It's just the city of Ann Arbor, and it's based on the city putting out bonds to finance it. I think there's quite a bit of that. And I have a few questions probably that will go to Mr. Zorn. In terms of overhead, is our only responsibility really just to approve the resolution so that we can participate? What is the city's responsibility beyond that? Where do businesses go to to participate? Is the city taking them through this, or is this more of a directing them right to the state? It will be a combination where we direct them to 11 energy partners and work. But as someone comes in and meets with our planning department, or as our business development officers out on one of our retention calls, and the item comes up, we can make a referral. Certain cases we may know in advance and bring representatives from their firm along on that retention call. Building department may have someone come in. I recently toured AT&T's facility at Avon Greenfield. The last few years they've put new boilers, new air handling systems. One of their facilities is putting new glass. All of those investments would be eligible. You may have someone who comes in and has already decided to do this, to make the investment, and the building department could make a referral because it can be done as they're doing the work. The financing can be arranged, and perhaps there's better terms. This is all about capital formation and bringing new money into the city of Southfield. Okay, so that was a good point that I do want to make sure that businesses are paying attention to. We also have the city's auditors at our last meeting plan ran to go through and review what are our auditing responsibilities as well. Okay, so the city's prepared to take them through the process. Yes. All right, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.
Before we go any further, I just want to make a comment. This is a business meeting. We are here to conduct the business of the city. This is not a performance. Therefore, any applause is totally inappropriate and it is disruptive. And I please ask the audience to refrain from applause and uh, uh, comments from the audience. It's very disruptive and it's inappropriate. Thank you, Mr. Fabius. I think uh, Mr. Fraser was oh, next, so uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Fraser. Yes, uh, this question is to Mr. Bowman. And the uh, question is, are you working with other communities at this point in time? Yes. Uh, we have been working with uh, multiple cities and counties around the state. Bingham County, Tennessee County, Macomb County, we talked to Wayne County, uh, Oakland County, the City of Detroit, uh, the Economic Development Corporation just today set up a meeting. Um, we're in the process with Ingham County of you know going through their legislative process. So we are um, we're talking to a number of other jurisdictions. Yeah, the reason I ask is that uh, there are some property holders that have commercial property or buildings here in Southfield that also have buildings in other communities. And if we're, one of the things the governor has insisted is that we start cooperating between communities. And if there's a way that we can uh, work with other communities on this lunch and learn or, or whatever so that there's a consistent message that goes out, uh, I think that would be helpful to uh, uh, the whole program. And the, the bottom line is we're using less energy and keeping the uh, environment uh, safe. So that's a great idea. Maybe you can, some of your associations of different, mm -hmm. you know, municipalities and economic developers and whatnot, we can sure to get a picture of them. Yes, thank you. Thank you. I'm Mr. Seibert. I would imagine that, um, at least I can't conceive of any of, um, uh, of these projects um, not going through our building department. It would seem to me that magnitude, especially of you know, some of our, our <coughs> office complexes, that every one of these would go through our building department for permitting and um, uh, inspections and so on, uh, electrical inspections, for instance, or <coughs> uh, plumbing. Um, well, one concern I, I would have, and, and I think that we need to, uh, to make sure that we have internal communication. So, uh, for instance, um, we have a number of structures that are mid-century modern uh, in Southfield. Uh, we have a sort of um, uh, a center for uh, mid-century uh, architecture, and um, I have a little concern about historical integrity. Um, uh, I'm all for the energy efficiency, uh, and at the same time, um, uh, I really see a future uh, in uh, for Southfield with promoting mid-century uh, modern architecture. Uh, when you, you look at, for instance, Federal Mobile Building, the original uh, structure with that sort of uh, uh, futuristic design, the, the space age design, um, to the Northland Theater uh, with, with the lines on that, uh, it would, uh, I think, behoove us to make sure that our planning department um, is in the loop um, on um, any uh, major changes to buildings so that uh, we're maintaining the in integrity of the architecture that we have, but at the same time um, uh, making the buildings um, cheaper to operate, uh, better for the environment, um, and so forth. Yes, I, um, I agree that this is something that our city has really turned 50 years old a few years ago, and we do have that, um, the architect, our city, we're primed to have reinvestment, and this is the driving uh, or motivating uh, program for that, and I think it's critical because we have to protect and invest in our infrastructure that's going to continue to be a vibrant community. One element that stood out, and I, I'm looking forward to see how this is going to work out, but I think the fact that contractors must guarantee their energy savings is, is, is what kind of took me over and, and really embracing this program because we are very serious about this. And the other comment I want to make, we too as a municipality have our energy issues as well. So is this something that
charged to whoever is within that payment scheme. When we, when we collect taxes for other entities, we charge them 1% collection fee. <coughs> Yeah, so um, the the element where the city can collect the special assessment needs to be there or else uh, that the court of law might say this is just a bank loan. You know, it's, it's not. But so is that what it is? Well, no. It, 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 the, on each project, the property owner is signing a special assessment. That they will pay this back. And it has the the force the or the property. Yeah, it has the force of a property tax obligation. Yeah. Now, if you have a um, hundred thousand buildings that pay property tax in the city, I don't know where you are, and uh, this wouldn't involve one single new property that isn't already paying property tax, because every property pays property tax, right? So if there were thirty projects. Huge success, right, for this program. You're saying out of 100,000 bills that go out every year, 30 of them will have a new line item. That cost to the city of that is de minimis. It's truly, it would be hard to even factor it into a budget. It would be so minuscule out of the cost of sending out 100,000 bills, adding a second line item to 30 of them. Excepting when you when you have new buildings come <coughs> come aboard, then those bills are going to have to be changed as then those new changes occur. So it's not like a one-time fixing. It, it could be as business takes place and people uh, use the PACE program, then those would be added to the tax bill. So it would be an ever changing, much like new construction. The new construction had taxes to the uh, to the tax roll for revenue. And uh, I mean, our guess is we'd have to pick that apart. <coughs> we'd have to pick that apart from the balance. We we pay off everybody under our tax collection. Uh, we would what send a check to the bank. Yes. Yeah. So that would be another. Right. You have to. If, each, if the city ends up doing any of these, if the property owners want it to go that way, the city would be adding a line item to the bill, and then when the property owner sends in the payment, the city would forward that portion of the payment to yeah. the
not just pennies or dollars, <clears throat> but becomes a problem that we have a way of removing ourselves from that portion of the program. Um, I, we're, we're passing the resolution that's in our package, correct? Is that what we're being yes. asked to do? Yes, Well, I was going to point out something's wrong on number seven. Uh, and especially when you get to the top of page five, um, it's an incomplete sentence. Um, words appear to be missing. And I'm not comfortable.
Madam President, my name is Gerard Mullen. Since 1968, I have lived at 17880 Louis Street. And, since 1961, I have worked here in this city, my city, the great city of Southfield. Tonight I'm here to talk about Walsh Mountain, a hidden Southfield treasure whose assets are seldom tapped. For those of you who are not keen on alliterations and on metaphors, I'm talking about the huge pile of free wood chips available to all Southfield residents at the rear of the municipal complex, south of the radio tower. Although the mountain has been recently moved to a more revealing and accessible location, its existence is still close to a state secret. I would like to suggest to Council that in the next Southfield Living newsletter that a treasure map be published to reveal the secret location of Mulch Mountain. Also, I'd like to suggest to Council that Mulch Mountain be a featured picture in next year's City Council calendar. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. The next uh, person is Ms. Pamela Gerald. Can you adjust the record, please? Pamela Gerald, P.O. Box 155, Southfield, Michigan, 48037-0155. Residents, you know that I am an independent voice for Southfield. My telephone number again is 248-352-9188. I am honored and humbled by all of you who call me stop me at the post office, gas station, Meyer, Kroger, Sam's Club, our library, city events, and at city hall to tell me that you watch the council meetings. Thank you very much and keep on watching because you have a right to be informed. As a result of your positive feedback towards me and the information I present, I am interested in representing you, the voter, on Southfield City Council in 2013. The naysayers will say why now. My answer to that is it's time for a change. Residents, as your independent voice for Southfield, I agree with Mr. Mullen that council is spending too much time on issues that are not generating much needed cash to our city. We are not totally focused on projects that will revitalize or stimulate our local economy. Instead, this council is concerned with super PACs and fracking resolutions. This council should be concerned with the following. One, to immediately select a permanent fire chief before July 1st, 2012, and to accept the safer grant or free money given to us by FEMA. Remember, the millage passed on May of 2011. Two, to immediately select a permanent police chief, a chief who is respected by his peers, a chief who can improve morale, and a chief that is experienced and educationally qualified, like Chief Thomas, who set the standard. We are short-staffed with police officers. Our police officers are sworn to protect, and they do that well, and have not had an acceptable contract since 2008. Give our police officers a contract now. Our administration, along with this city council, is not, I repeat, is not making the most frugal financial decisions. For example, this council foolishly entered into a renewed contract with the Lansing firm for lobbying services. I purport that Southfield has not seen a return on that investment. We have a legislative and urban affairs committee that consists of members from this council. Those council members should be in Lansing lobbying on our behalf. Even Mr. Southfield, Councilman Don Percotti, has mentioned on numerous occasions that Lansing is not adequately responding to Southfield. Question, where are the lobbyists? The lobbyists should have informed this council about House Bill 5644, introduced by Democratic State House of Representatives member Timothy Bloodsoe. House Bill 5644 is asking for public Act 309 and 310 of 2006, the Stand Your Ground Law, to be repealed. 
former mayor of Flint, now State House of Representatives member, and fellow Democrat Woodrow Stanley believes that this law promotes violence. We do not want legalized murder in the state of Michigan or in our city, Southfield. We want real law and order. This is why we need more police officers and not a leading story like this in the Southfield Sun. House Bill 5644 repeal stands your ground law was supported by 12 other Democrats, but I did not see our Representative Rudy Hobbs' name on the list. Why? Representative Rudy Hobbs, what is your position on House Bill 644? Do you support the repeal? House Bill 5644 makes sense. Super PACs and fracking resolutions don't make sense. That's exactly my point. What matters is the pressing issue of public safety. This council refuses to address the 800-pound gorilla in this room right now. It's time for a change. We need new council members that are willing to address the issues that have a direct impact on the residents and our employees. As your independent voice, I ask you to vote out council members who engage in frivolous resolutions, free cars, free gas, and will not take concessions and pay cuts with their employees. It's time for a change. It's time, it's time, it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. Ms. Seymour, Mr. Um, I'd like to address Ms. Gerald on one point. It's a long-standing tradition that no electioneering takes place in this chamber. Uh, announcements of can uh, council candidacy or any other public office do not take place during these meetings, and I'd ask you to respect that tradition in this, this chamber. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree with that. Oh, Chair, I, we all agree with that. Yes, we all agree. I do have a few comments. Um, I'm not finished. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Come on. We have um, one more. And that would be um, Ms. Linda Cooper. Mrs. Linda Cooper. Name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Linda Cooper, 2658 <coughs> West Eleven Mile Road, Southfield, 40635. Good evening, council members, Mayor Lawrence, staff. 40, uh, 38 years ago, we moved here to Southfield, so I thought this would be a good time to come before you and just share some of our feelings and express our gratitude for living in this beautiful city. I apologize for having to read from my notes, but I don't want to forget anything. I've come before you tonight to express my gratitude and my appreciation for the hard work you do as a council and as mayor. I realize you're faced with very many difficult decisions, and I, I believe that each one of you puts a lot of thought and consideration into the decision-making process, and I thank you. I'd like to use some of my five minutes to tell you why my husband and I chose to move to Southfield in 78 and why we chose to con continue to live here after 34 years. In 1978, after carefully looking at many communities, to look for the best fit for our family, we chose Southfield, even though it meant a long drive to no fit for my husband. Southfield's diversity, great schools, beautiful neighborhoods, many parks and recreation programs were just a few of the reasons why it made it so easy to make Southfield our home. I'd like to start with the Southfield Parks and Recreation Department. The vast acres of parkland make it possible for every age group to be able to enjoy the outdoors. We have hiking trails, play skates, picnic areas, tennis courts, ice arena, swimming pool, and golf courses, to name a few. Our family was involved with the Parks and Rec sports program as our daughters were growing up, and we believed it played an important role in their development. Therefore, it was with great pride that we attended the opening of the Miracle Field that is home of Michigan's first baseball field for children with special needs. Now that we're older, we're enjoying the other end of the spectrum with all the activities um, and support for seniors that Southfield has to offer, including the Wellness Center. When we moved to Southfield, we first lived on Edgemont near 10 Mile and Inkster Road, and we'd take our daughters for walks through the woods and we'd sit by what we call Hidden Lake. 
That area is now known as Carpenter Lake National Preserve, which won its 2008 Project of the Year Award from the Michigan Chapter of American Public Works Association in the 2010 Park Design Award. The South Hills Human Services Department serves a vital role in providing support programs to our community, including counseling service, legal aid, and social outreach services. The South Hill Community Foundation Women's Fund, of which I am a member, believes this department provides valuable support to the families in our community, and we have awarded them several grants. Our family has always been proud of Southfield for the progressive programs and ordinances in place to protect the environment. I remember we had curbside recycling before any of the other communities in the area. Southfield's well-designed webpage, which includes Southfield Goes Green, is another great source of information offered to the community. The Southfield Living Magazine that is delivered to our home is full of information about classes, programs, health issues, voter information, and events. And I can't forget about our beautiful state-of-the-art library. Whenever we have visitors to our home, the library is one of the first places we take them to show off Southfield. I think the physical appearance of our the city is so important, not just for the property values, but it shows we are a strong, vibrant community. Code enforcement has a difficult job, but they are working hard to keep Southfield looking like the well-maintained city it was when we first moved here. I know I'm running out of time, but I wanted to say how much I appreciate feeling safe in our community. I understand every city is facing similar difficult financial decisions, and I'm truly thankful for our police and fire departments. Another reason I'm proud to be a Southfield resident is that I've always felt that my voice was heard and respected. Whether I was calling City Hall with a concern, talking with a council person, or participating in a town hall meeting. Southfield res residents won't always agree with each other on every issue, but I have faith that our elected council members and the staff of this great city are working to make the best decisions possible. And again, I want to thank each and every one of you. I'd like to close by letting you know that we're a three-generation family here in Southfield. One of our daughters and son-in-law both went through Southfield schools and bought a home in Magnolia in 2000. We now have grandchildren that attend Southfield Public Schools and enjoy all the activities and programs that their parents did before them. Thank you. Thank you. We've come now to the council portion, and I'm going to ask Councilman Frazier uh, to, as chair of the legislative committee, to report on the synthetic marijuana emergency ordinance that we. The, uh, uh, if you've been reading in the, or listening to the news, the uh, synthetic marijuana uh, problem, uh, K2 and spice and uh, bath salts, has been in the news, has been all negative. Uh, young people, older people, have been ingesting this, these uh, chemicals, and bad things have happened uh, all the way from. The worst that I've heard of is down in Florida where uh, there was a, a man that was on, on that that uh, was cannibalizing another, another person. But uh, what we, we felt is that this the state of Michigan wasn't uh, working fast enough to uh, outlaw sales of these chemicals in, in the city of Southfield. So the the mayor and council took the leadership role in putting together a, an emergency ordinance that we passed uh, last week to uh, outlaw sales of, of this chemicals in, in the, the city of Southfield. Uh, and we think that our ordinance is stronger than some of the other communities around us because our attorney worked with the state of the state police lab to right, it seemed like a chemi uh, uh, chemistry test, as a uh, description of the kind of chemicals that are not allowed in, in these uh, products. So that when the, uh, the perpetrators uh, redesign the, uh, the chemical, 
and they do. Whenever there's an ordinance written, and the, the folks that manufacture these kind of things, they change the formula just a little bit so that it's just outside of our ordinance. Uh, we think that we have captured the, the chemical design well enough so that if any of these chemicals appear in any of the product, future products, that it will also be outlawed. So uh, I know that we come under a lot of criticism that from certain people in, in the city of Southfield that we're not doing our job, we're not, we don't keep our eye on the ball, but I can tell you that every member of this council works hard all the time trying to maintain the health and welfare of the community <coughs> so that our citizens and the people that visit our community have a high quality of, of life and enjoy being here. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to our council president. Thank you, Mr. Frazier. Um, council, we have come to, um, we have a, a schedule of special meeting for Monday, June 25th. Mr. 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 Chair, I move that, uh, that the special meeting is scheduled for Monday, June 25th at, at 6.30 p.m. in the council conference room for the purpose adopting the 2012-13 budget. Support for it. Motion by Mr. Fricasi, supported by Mr. Moss. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. We have an expense. We have three expenses. Mr. Fricasi? If I may, I'd just like to approve the expense report of Larry Frazier for the MML uh, Annual Conference of Grand Rapids. The report from the MLC Congress Cities in Phoenix, Arizona, and the expense report of Margaret Fraser, uh, Congressional Cities Conference, Washington, D.C. It would be D.C. and D. Another the Council portion report. A motion by Mr. Picasso, supported by Mr. Steiger. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion has carried. Next, we come to the.
from the state of Michigan uh, Department of Human Services notifying us of adult foster care homes that are going to, into the community. Is there any way that you can give the residents that live directly around those um, adult uh, adult care facilities that they're in the neighborhood so that they can just be apprised that they're there and that they can contact the police if there are any concerns that they have. Because usually what happens is they'll come to the podium and say is there anything that we can do. But since we're now, this is the first time I received this notification, that we can be proactive letting them know, you know, if there are any concerns you have, let us know, but it's there in the community. Well, for the chair, I'm not aware of the specific ones you're referencing, but if, if the proposed um, foster care home would be for up to six adults. So this came to the clerk, and then we were copied on it. It's up to six, then there, there really is, 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 the, the idea is that the state legislates in that area, and the, the intent there is to mainstream people into these facilities within a residential setting. And so that's why it's very on a state basis. We've been meeting with the planning department and we're looking at those instances where it's a, it's a larger home, say, you know, 10, 12 people uh, that would be actually uh, uh, residing there. And we are looking at that currently and I think at some point we should be able to have something back to council. So even if it's a small number of people that are there, I guess my question is, is there any way that the like surrounding neighbors know so that they're not um, surprised, oh. they're not, you know, caught off guard that it is a... Um, my understanding is that these are all on the website of the, of the state of Michigan, the Department of Human Services, that you can go on there and, and review a particular one on a particular street. Um, but I, I will look at that and confirm what the notice is under under the uh, Department of Human Services and, and then let council know how does that how is that communicated or how might one find that out. So I think that ability is there uh, in terms of the state website. Okay, so we and, and what I want to see if we can let the, the, the surrounding neighbors know that there's an adult foster care home in your facility. If you need, you know, if you see anything uh, out of
this way, uh, uh, Saturday and Sunday is the South Hill Open House. This is uh, where we hope, um, I'm probably taking a little thunder from the mayor here, but uh, I'm on the planning committee, so I, I hope you'll uh, won't mind. Uh, we are, as we did last July, we're, uh, we're very, very successful. Um, uh, every house that was uh, on the market uh, that was um, uh, listed last year got offers, not all of them sold. Uh, some houses, I think the record was 54 <coughs> uh, people came through. Uh, so uh, with the success of last year, we're repeating this uh, this year. And uh, any property that is listed uh, by a realtor uh, or bank owned, uh, uh, we hope to have open. It's from 1 to 4 on Saturday and 1 to 4 on Sunday. If you know somebody who uh, is looking to make that transition from an apartment uh, to a house or to an, uh, uh, a house in Southfield, uh, this would be the time to go. Um, I'd also like to do a reminder that on Sunday afternoon, um, the Southfield Parks and Garden Club will be doing their sixth annual garden walk. And the featured, uh, it's Sunday, June 24th, uh, from 2 to 5 p.m. Uh, people may gather, uh, there'll be a shuttle bus at Brace Lutterly School on Nine Mile in Southfield. And the uh, neighborhood that is hosting the uh, garden walk this year is Roseland Woods. Um, they have uh, 20 houses that are open there, will be opening their yards. Um, so it's, it's going to be quite a display. Uh, Roseland Woods is uh, a neighborhood with uh, very tall trees, so they have uh, the gardeners in uh, Roseland Woods have uh, the challenge of shade, uh, but have done beautiful things uh, with their yards. Um, we're all for curb appeal, and uh, so we are. Um, uh, I'm very glad to promote this um, and invite everyone to turn out. Tickets are ten dollars, and uh, they're available through uh, at the door actually at uh, Braceboro School. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, make mention of um, uh, something that council reviewed and our community relations staff worked on was the resident handbook. Uh, and I'm uh, really pleased with this. We, we have many new people who move into the community and don't always know uh, city codes or what our expectations or the term uh, I've used for a long time, our South Hill standards are when it uh, comes to neighborhood living. And uh, this uh, brochure will be mailed to all neighborhood association presidents. They're available uh, through the community relations department. Um, I know in my neighborhood we have a welcome package. We're going to insert this uh, hand, uh, handout in our, in our uh, Magnolia welcome package. And um, the final thing I wanted to mention, at the last meeting, um, our last regular meeting or televised meeting, some things were said about DTE and its response to the community. Um, and while I don't disagree with anything that was said, um, I do want to uh, uh, mention um, something positive that CTE, uh, at least I've observed. Um, they've been out recently doing a lot of tree trimming uh, in um, areas where the uh, tree branches are over the uh, power lines. And for instance, they did uh, Lasha Road from 9 to 10 Mile, uh, did a major uh, clearing there. And I saw them on Greenview, Melrose, Westland, Hollywood, and a couple of other other streets uh, in um, residential backyards getting uh, tree branches out of, uh, of uh, power lines. So um, this is when we had DTE in uh, a couple of months ago and expressed our concerns with their um, uh, response uh, in Southfield. This is one of the things that we did bring up. and. Uh, I was pleased to see they um, were here with uh, Cruz. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sauber. Anyone else? I want to say thank you. And um, I wanted to review a couple of things. I attended the first Wisconsin Cyber graduation of University High. Uh, that school or that academy should be just a uh, 
one million dollars in scholarships. It was, every child was going to college. It was just amazing, hundred um, percent. And so I, I was the parents and the students are there. They were the first. It was really interesting. They'll be setting the pace for all the other uh, children, and that was that was a very very nice event. I just want to echo the open house. The reason why we have the open house, many of you know, we have foreclosures in our city, and you can sit back and complain about things, or you can be innovative, try to find a way to, to have a, a, a solution to the problem. And um, collaboratively, um, community relations, um, uh, Mr. Nimrod, and um, we came up with uh, an open house, city open house. And so all of the homes that were available for sale, for, uh, that were foreclosed, we put on the market. And we did something more than that. We brought in all of the realtors and educated them. Tell them our South Hill story about all the um, things that um, our resident of Cooper talked about. We educated because sometimes we found that realtors were bypassing them and they didn't have a positive story. But we took them to our lake. We took them to our, our library. Like, so we had the police, fire, our school to come in, the superintendent school. We fed them breakfast on top of that. And we put them on a bus and we took them around the city to show them what a great event and what the quality of life would be here. And it was a, they are so energi energized this year and they're excited about it. And they're going to add other homes to the market. And the good thing that they told us at the meeting I attended is that the foreclosed properties that are coming on the market are selling very fast compared to before. So, you know, there's a long period before it's actually available on the market. But uh, they're saying that it's hard now and you have to act really fast. So that's the sign of our economy coming back and a good sign for the city. But the dates again, for everyone watching, if you're downsizing or you have family or friends, Saturday, June 27th, Sunday, June 24th, it will be the city, the entire city will be an open house and we'll have You'll be able to get it here at City Hall, um, the listings of the homes that will be available. I cut the ribbon. I was excited for a new bridal salon in Southville. I was, the owner was telling me we don't have a bridal salon in our city. So it was very exciting. The, her, a couple of the brides that bought dresses from her um, came. It's in the uh, Carlisle building off of... Um, Franklin Road, the uh, apartment building, and I'm trying to remember the boutique that was there for years in that building, in the Carlisle building. It had been there for years, I'm sorry, but she, she, she had been there over 30 years, and she closed down her business, and it's now a, a bridal salon. So you can go to South Hill and get a bridal salon. She is uh, very personal. It's a beautiful uh, setting. Um, the other thing is that uh, the mayor's walks are going. Um, I've got uh, two councilmen out, so I'm waiting for Myron and Joan and, and, and Don. And, and so it, it is going um, three times a week. We, um, we've given out our shirts. We have water for you. So come on the walk, 7 <coughs> in the morning. And um, some people are choosing later in the day, but it's just leadership that we're providing. Our beautiful parking homes. We all need to to be focused on our health and set the example for the next generation because we're living longer and our quality of life is uh, contingent upon us really investing in our own health and well-being. And then lastly, I just want to say with um, to to through the chair to the administration, I am bombarded with questions about Evergreen River, and if you could just give us public update on the anticipated date when we will be repairing Evergreen Road in front of City Hall. We will do so. Okay. But the date w is scheduled for 2014. Yeah, we, we have a commitment. Fred, can you help me out on this? Please. This is Deputy Administrator Fred Zorn. But the funding is in place for 2014. We are trying to move that funding up to 2013. There are two acquisitions that need to be cleared up, and those are probably the biggest hurdle in, um, in, in moving that up to 2013. Um, a large amount of the engineering has been, it has been completed, but we have funding for 90% of that project, so we've got a 10% gap to fill on that. Scientists want to 
wanted that on the record because we are very serious. We travel that road often and uh, we are so committed to fixing it. So I, I'm bombarded. When are you going to fix it and are you aware? But we are aware and we're working on it. Yes, uh, I think we've uh, proven that we can super glue a road for uh, long <laughs> enough and uh, we, didn't need to, we didn't need to do a complete rebuild on that.
the, the motion would be to approve this uh, amendment to the to the ordinance and also to uh, introduce the ordinance. Madam President, I move the amendment to uh, section 8.33, chapter 99, signed, um, uh, title uh, 8, building regulations of the city code. Sure. The motion by Mr. Cyber, by Mr. Frazier, to amend the um, section 8.33, chapter 99, signed or signed or All in favor? Aye. Aye.